Welcome back! Got lag problems, frame rate loss, or other issues on your PC? Well, today on Dialed In DIY, we've got a fix for that. The drive that contains your operating system actually needs room for the system's temporary files to operate. By adding a separate drive that contains extra software and your bulky media files and other things, you're actually giving your computer extra room to breathe and work. In addition, you're giving yourself extra storage space. Before you buy anything, you actually want to open up your computer, look at the power supply, and see if you have an extra cable, like one of these Molex or SATA cables, to go ahead and hook up a new drive to so that you can power it. And as long as you've got the computer open, hey, you might as well grab yourself a can of compressed air and clean out some of the areas that will gather a lot of extra dust, which will also help your computer to operate a little bit more smoothly. In a previous video, which is linked in the description below, I actually took a drive out of a dead computer and showed you how you can recover the data from it. As long as the drive itself wasn't corrupt, you can use it again in a computer like this, or you can do like I did, and just go ahead and buy a new drive. The approach that I'm about to walk you through works the same regardless of what type of drive you want to use, be it an HDD or a solid state drive. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and unbag the drive and see how we can best configure this to fit in the drive bay inside the computer. In order to check this best and so that I can give you a good shot of it, I'm going to go ahead and unplug my existing drive so that we've got a clear, clean line of sight to where I'm going to slide this new drive right into the cage. If you're buying a new drive, also don't forget you're going to need screws to hold it in place if it doesn't come with clips to hold it. And you're also going to need the drive connecting cable, which I'm using a SATA cable that I purchased online as well. You can actually repurpose all of those materials from an old computer if you have one that you can get parts out of, or you can just buy those online as well because they're not that expensive. The particular SATA cable that I got looks just like this. I'm going to show you the spot where it plugs into in the computer too because on my motherboard I had several extra spots just to the right of that or orange cable you see there. I just picked the first open one next to the previous ones that were already plugged in, and the cool thing about a SATA cable is it goes in one way. You can't accidentally put it in backwards, which is a good thing for someone like me. In the inset picture, you can see the shorter section of strip for the SATA connection on the data. The larger or longer section is where I'm going to hook up the power. I went ahead and put the blue data cable on first, and then went back and found the first available SATA power cable that came out of my power supply, and went and hooked that up to my new drive as well. Then I went back and reconnected the cables that were previously on my initial drive. Now, both of my drives are connected, the new one as well as the original drive. Believe it or not, that actually completes all of the physical work you really have to do to put a new drive in a computer. The rest is just tucking away the extra cables to make sure they're out of the way and putting the case back in place. That part really wasn't so hard at all, was it? It's usually a lot easier than you might think it's going to be. Now just reconnect the cables for the power and the peripherals and fire your computer back up. Once it's on, you can go ahead and check the drive area, but if it was a brand new drive, you're not really going to have much of a chance of seeing anything here, so we need to format it. This is a bunch of steps, but it's actually quite easy. Just go down to the Start button and click on that, then go over to the computer and right-click on there. Select Manage from that drop-down, and it will open up a new window. From here, you're going to go over to where it says Storage and click on Disk Management. If you get a new window like this one open up, just go ahead and close it because we're going to move on to the section where you're going to find the new drive, which should say unformatted or unallocated next to it. We're going to actually just go a little bit farther to the left of that and find the little icon and right click on it and go down and select initialize disk. In our new window here, it should default to master boot record, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to go ahead and click OK and move on. This is going to drop us back into the screen where we were before, where you found your new drive. We're going to go back into that area where we were first, and we're going to right click in the area where it says unallocated. From this drop down, I'm selecting the new simple volume, which is going to open up a new window, which is the new simple volume wizard. The only thing you need to do in this window is click next, which is going to bring up a new window, which once again is going to have defaults that we're fine with. So we'll click next one more time. This new window will be titled assign drive letter or path and just go to the drop down arrow and pick the letter designation you want to use for your new drive. Once that's done, click next again. This is going to bring up a new window, which reads format partition. I was fine with all of these defaults, and you can go ahead and click next to move on to the next window. This one should read, completing the simple volume wizard, and all you have to do is hit finish. And indeed, you are finished. Just wait a few seconds, watch for the icon to quit spinning, and 
You can then go back to your computer, open it up, and check for the new drive. I want to give a special thanks to Base NATO, who does the IT support for Sharpshooting Shark Gaming, because he's the one that taught me how to do this BIOS free setup for formatting a new drive. This worked out great, and I really appreciate his help. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.